Hello, citizens, heroes, and villains out there. Today, <laughs> today we're going to be discussing my top 10 tools for beginning artists and illustrators. Make sure to stick around to the very end to join in in a giveaway. This is also going to be a little bit of a journey showing you where my art started using the first of these tools and how it's grown using the tools I suggest later on in the video. Without further ado, here we go. Tool number one. This one may come as no surprise to anyone. My first tool that I suggest using is a basic pencil. Some people may prefer to use mechanical pencils or regular pencils. I prefer to use a number two pencil, not just any number two pencil, but a number two Ticonderoga pencil. Obviously this does go with also having a pencil sharpener. I personally prefer to use electric. You may prefer to use a regular manual sharpener, which does give you some more control. There are other types of pencils out there with different densities that you can draw with. Now, using just a number two pencil, I was able to get to a point that my art looked like this. But there were so many things that I could not do. To go with a number two pencil brings us to our number two. Number two is a very good eraser. You don't want to use just the eraser on the back of your pencil because that can smudge and tear your paper. There are three types that I would advise looking into. My first eraser is the Prismacolor Magic Rub. I do believe that these are also called Scholar Erasers and they are not expensive. You can get a pack of three for about five dollars. My number two eraser is the Prismacolor, also Scholar, Triangular Black Eraser. This is very good to use the eraser to do highlights and to draw using negative space. Number three is to get one of those erasers that click in and out that you can change the depth to. And that's just to do very basic erasing and also take out lines. Number three really took my artwork to the next level. And I can't tell you how many packs of art tools I opened and threw these away because I had no idea what they were even meant for. This is known as a Tortulian. Tortillion? Tor... 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 Blending stump. A blending stump, or Tortulian, I think. Anyway. A blending stump allows you to blend what you've been drawing together. This works both with a graphite pencil as well as coloring pencil. This right here took my artwork to levels like this. So make sure to get yourself a blending stump. These are some of the cheapest art supplies you can get and you can find them at any art supply store and even Walmart. Before we get into number four, I'm very happy to say that Sean Humberg's Creative Corner does have its own website where you can look at sculpting, 3D printing, and much more. You can also check out the website to buy official Sean Humberg Creative Corner merchandise, which includes t-shirts, hoodies, tapestries, stickers, and so much more with artwork from the Creative Corner. So check out SeanHumbergsCreativeCorner.com and see what you can get to build up your Creative Corner too. Let's get back to our list. Number four. So that you can get very crisp lines in the drawings that you do, be sure to have yourself a good ruler. I do advise getting a metal ruler or one of those wooden rulers that have the metal strip on the inside. The reason that you do not want to just get a wood or plastic ruler is that they will warp over time. So make sure to get yourself a good metal one. I personally prefer to use an architectural ruler because it has six different types of measurements all the way around it, allowing me to use different variations of scales for my drawing. Number five. Now that you're starting to build up your collection, it's important to keep it in an organized fashion so that you can get to your artwork very quickly and very easily. This is why a carrying case is very important for your art tools. This is the one that I prefer to use, made by Speedball, that you can get at any hobby store. I do have a couple of variations of this. This is the one that I keep my basic drawing tools in. I also have this larger one, also made by Speedball, that I keep all the tools that I don't use as often, as well as a lot of my coloring pencils and color markers. Number six, while you will begin your drawing journey by using one of these and drawing very lightly to create your reference lines, it's very nice to be able to create reference lines that you don't have to worry about later, which is why number six is to get yourself a blue and or red erasable coloring pencil. 
These right here come with erasers on the end, but you can use regular erasers. These have allowed me to create reference lines and really start getting into artwork that looks like this. Number seven. Once you get comfortable with using pencil, then you may want to start making your artwork pop a lot more. And this gets into more of a comic book style drawing, which is something that I've been getting a lot more into recently. So for number seven, it's good to have a good set of fine liner pens. My personal favorite are the Marabou pens. These were actually suggested to me by Jazza. But before I started using these, I started using the Micron pens. You could find these at Walmart, Staples, office supply stores, hobby stores. This gives you a very specific width of what you're drawing with and allows you to really make bold, pop out art and comic book style art. To go along with the fine liner pens, kind of a bonus tool for this list. Throw me a freaking bonus here. <laughs> is a white gel pen. Not only does this allow you to remove some mistakes that you may have made with your fine liner pen, but it's also very important for adding highlights to anything that you've created. So if you're wanting to draw an eye or something like that, you can add this to create highlights without having to worry about drawing around the white of the paper. And it's gonna really make some of your artwork stand out. Number eight. Once you've gotten used to using fine liner pens, then you can progress to brush tip pens. Brush tip pens are another great way to make a very bold statement and give you control through your drawings. While fine liner pens only have one width, but they come out very bold, brush tip pens allow you to gradually increase or decrease the width of your line. They do take practice, which is why I suggest using these and getting used to these after you've gotten used to fine liner pens. Number nine, once you've gotten used to making grayscale and black and white drawings, it's time to start adding color. I was terrified of adding color to my drawings for a very long time. Every time I tried, it didn't quite turn out the way that I wanted it to. So for the longest time, I did everything in black and white or grayscale. Part of that is having the right tools for the job. If you're wanting to blend and shade, you can't just use regular Crayola colored pencils. You can, but it's very complicated and very hard to do. So what I do suggest when you start getting into coloring is to invest in a good set of Prisma colored pencils. There are two types that you can use when it comes to this. You have your regular Prismacolor pencils and you have your Prismacolor watercolor pencils. I don't actually use these as watercolor pencils. I use these as regular coloring pencils. What's really nice is these actually do blend a lot more smoothly than your regular Prismacolor pencils. Number 10 is alcohol-based markers, but I want to talk a little bit about this first. A lot of people hear alcohol-based markers, they immediately jump to Copic markers. Copic markers are very expensive, going all the way up to $500 for a set of these markers. You do not have to put that kind of money in to get very good alcohol-based marker drawings. I created pieces of art like this, and this, and this, and I didn't even spend $100 on my markers. These are a hoo-hoo alcohol-based markers. A set of 120 of these is only $70. They draw very similarly to Copics. The only difference is these cannot be refilled. But when you consider how much money you spend even on the Copic refills after you've gotten the Copic markers, these end up costing you less. I'm very happy with these markers and as much as I wanted Copics originally, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and stick to my Ahuhu markers. This brings us to our giveaway. I want to support all of the fans that I have out there and all the fellow artists that really do want to improve their craft. And I hope that I can help out with that. So what I want to do today, leave a comment in the comment section down below why you want to be an artist and why it is so important to you. And you will any yourself a chance to win a set of these 36 Prismacolor watercolored pencils to help you out on your journey. So now you know the top 10 tools that I like to use as an artist and illustrator, and I'd love to see what you can make out of those tools too. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and leave in the comment section down below what you'd like to see in future videos. Can't wait to see what we build together next. Sean Humberg, signing out.